All right, now we get to our final graph, an acceleration time graph. In the acceleration time graph, the first thing that someone might ask you to do is to find acceleration at a particular instant time. Much as we've seen before, when you have a graph and they ask you to find the value for that graph, that's the easiest type of question you can have. So somebody could say, find the acceleration at, say, t equal one second. Well, no problem. We go and find one second right here. We drag our line straight up right there. We go straight across and we find that the answer is oops, the answer is 10 meters per second squared. Or if we want to write it in terms of vectors, 10 meters per second squared i hat, assuming this was in the x direction, j hat if it was in the y direction, so forth. So 10 meters per second squared, just find the value of the time, go up, read it right off the graph. The easiest type of problem can be given on this type of graph. So now we're given a different question for an acceleration time graph. What is the average acceleration from t equals 0 seconds to t equals 4 seconds? Well, from 0 seconds all the way over to 4 seconds, we do not have a straight line. Remember, if you have a straight line, you can find the final value, you can find the initial value, add those two together and divide by 2 to find the midpoint. But for any other curve, that's not the way it's done. For any other curve, what you have to do is find the area under the curve which in this case for an acceleration time graph gives you the change in velocity and then divide by the change in time. So we have to find the area under the curve and then we have to divide by the time in which it was found. So first steps first, we're going to have to break this problem up into a bunch of geometrical shapes unless you happen to have the functional form and you knew calculus because one of the things calculus does besides find slopes of lines is to do what's called integrals that finds areas in the curve. That's basically what calculus is about. So since we don't know calculus, we're going to need to go and break this into some shapes. Looks to me like I can start there. It goes straight up here. That would break that there. Go from here right up to there. That gives me a rectangle. So that's one shape that I see. Another shape that I see is I could come from here, go straight over to right there. That gives me this shape. And then, last but not least, I have this shape here. So that's the areas on the curve. I have three things. I have a couple of rectangles and a triangle, and I need to find that area to find delta V, the change in the velocity from an acceleration time graph. So let's uh, go and do that. We have two, let me do that for a second. We have two seconds for the base of the green rectangle, and it looks like 15 meters per second squared for the height, which gives me 20 meters per second of area for the green. For the blue rectangle, I appear to have two seconds. For the base and the height is 5 meters per second squared which gives me 10 meters per second of area and for this triangle here it goes from 5 to 15 so this height is 15 minus 5 that's 10 and this base is 2 so I have 1 half 2 seconds times 10 meters per second squared 
which gives me another 10 meters per second. There's the same amount of area in that triangle as there is in that rectangle. So, putting all this together, delta V is 10, 20, plus 30 more is 50 meters per second. So the average acceleration is 50 meters per second divided by a total of 1, 2, 3, 4 seconds. Which, if I do the calculations right, is 12.5 meters per second squared. And so that's the answer for calculating the average. By the way, if you wanted to find the final speed of an object after acceleration, you can't do that directly off of this graph. You can find the change in velocity. Here it is, right here. But you have to know what the initial velocity of the object was in order to find its final velocity. Again, this gets back to the idea of reference frames and that you have to define a coordinate system. If a person's sitting in a car and they're holding a ball in their hand, that ball to them is at rest. It is not at rest, for instance, with respect to another person who is watching them from the ground and seeing the car move at 40 miles per hour. Now, even if the car's not accelerating, so the graph has no area under the curve, so they both agree that there's no change in velocity, they don't agree on the original velocity without defining their original coordinate system so they know the initial velocity. An acceleration time graph, a velocity time graph, when you find an area and curve, only tell you change. There is always some initial condition. In calculus, these are known as constants of integration. Calculus, when you integral, is always uncertain to this constant, which has to be given from something else. All right, so we know how to find the average acceleration know how to be able to find the acceleration from the curve. What about the slope on this graph? Well, it turns out the slope does have a name. The slope of one of these graphs, when you take this, is known as the jerk. But there is no physics that uses that. Okay, that's just a math term, which is basically the third slope of a position, or what they call a third derivative, which in our case would be the slope of the acceleration time graph. So there is nothing about the slope in the case of acceleration time graphs, you're looking for areas. In the case of position time graph, there's no meaning to the area under the curve. Only the slope seems to have meaning. If you can do these three type of graphs and solve anything that we're asking for, then you basically understand how to handle motion. The graphs and dealing with tabulate data never go wrong. Formulas in the book, besides these basic definitions that I've already given you, any other formula, like the kinematic equations, are special case scenarios, and they're assuming very specific shapes of graphs. So if the graph isn't that shape, they won't work. So for instance, the kinematic equations do not apply to a graph of this shape. But graphical analysis, like we're showing here, do apply. So emphasize and pay attention to the graphs and the definition. Do not go look for special formulas at the end of a problem or something. They're just that, special. You have to derive them yourself. Nobody else is going to do the work and give it to you. That's part of your work.